The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. My name is Dave and in today's episode we're going to take a look at LED oscilloscopes. We can find an awesome schematic for an LED oscilloscope in Forrest Mims Engineer's Notebook. I want to modify this though and make it an XY oscilloscope. Sounds good? Well, then let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So in Forrest Mims Engineer's Notebook, you can find a schematic for an LED oscilloscope. I've used two of these kits that you can get for cheap on eBay and made a little 10x10 LED oscilloscope once. Uh, it's a bit messy. So this is what it looks like. Um, sadly, there's an LM3915 instead of the 4 version in here. And the difference is that this is a logarithmic ship, while the other one is a linear voltage divider thingy in there. So this is all we get on the oscilloscope when I use my sine wave generator. And yeah, I was like looking at it for the longest time and thought, why doesn't it look right? Yeah, now you know. <laughs> if we turn down the frequency a bit, it's around about one hertz. And you can see it by the LED row going one down and one up again. Let's up that frequency. There we go. Oh, yeah. If there would be an LM3914 in there, you'd see a bit of curve. I have four chips, but yeah, I, I need them for another thing you will see later. So the LED oscilloscope works like that. The 4017 is a decade counter, so it counts from 1 to 10 and then starts over again. Gets its clock from over here and whenever it is at the certain number it will put that to high otherwise this is all low. If this pin goes high it will light up any LED that's on here where this turns negative or lets current through. That's more accurate in the case of the LM3914. This is what the LM3914 looks like from the inside. There are a lot of comparator op amps. The voltage divider basically divides 0 to 5 into 0.5, 1 volt, 1.5, etc. etc. And with these voltages over the voltage divider, um, each voltage will be compared to the input signal, and if it is bigger, it will turn on the LED. So, with that in mind, if we go back to our LED oscilloscope, if we have our input signal, this will then be shown on the column. Let's just say the decay counter starts counting. The first row it will show whatever the LM3914 um, has as a value here. So we might end up here. So for the next row, we might end up a little bit lower and so on and so on. If the frequency of the decay counter is close enough to the signal input or a multiple of that, we will be able to see like a curve or have like the wave on there if the frequency of the 4070 is like double or any other number times the signal frequency and then you basically have an LED oscilloscope. Okay but this is kind of boring and I have another plan. What is the maximum storage capacity of a supercapacitor? Whoa it is Supercapacitor man! I know the answers. Are we really going with Supercapacitor man? All the good names were taken. What's the charge time of a Supercapacitor? What's my line again? Shouldn't I be flying? Ah! For answers to these questions, fly on over to Element 14 Tech Spotlight! So to make this an XY oscilloscope, I basically need two LM3914s that work together. And that in itself is complicated enough, I guess. But uh, I 
challenged myself to also make this a 20 by 20 LED oscilloscope. So luckily there's a schematic in the Forest Mims notebook um, to cascade the LM3914 chips. To make life a bit easier for me, I've made a little PCB that cascades both of the chips and gives me a 20 LED output. Let me show you how they work. Ground here and plus here. Our signal wants to go here. That's the center of the pot. Not sure why the first LED is on. Now let's see if we can invert this. I've made this board that pulls the output high. So in theory, I can then turn around the LEDs and they should all light up and only the position that lights here should be off. So this is a bit annoying. I have no idea how to remove that. So with the pull-ups on the output of the LM3914, I basically now have like a lot of positive signals and that one negative signal. It's a bit more complicated because it's all analog and it's not. As you might remember, the 4017, the decade counter, has basically a bunch of ground pins and then there's one high pin, so I have to invert that. This is the part that we already know. This is the LM3914 and the LED on that side. And we would come from down here with the um, 4017 decade counter. We want to have another LM3914 here and make this a plus. We already know that there is a pull up in here. That's the 470 ohms. Now we have the positive pull tight signal that we want to have negative. This is what the inverter would do then. To begin with, I started with the 4069, but then found a chip that has eight input pins and eight output pins instead of the 4069 that has only six inputs and six outputs to invert. With that, I have everything I need to make this XY oscilloscope. I only have to solder up 400 LEDs now and put everything together. So let's do that. Okay, it really looks that bad. This looks like a really dirty signal as well, so I'm not so surprised that this looks like that. Okay, you can actually see the rectangle here. This line is really annoying and I think, yeah, that's line 11 and this is line 11 as well. But I can also, can I shift it? No, you can, you still see that there's a line here and the first line as well. And this might have something to do with the uh, resistor values. I think these have a resistor value for the LEDs of 1K or around 1K and these have like 2.4. And I think those resistor values are set for the bar graph mode and not the dot mode. So I have to experiment with this value as well.
Oof. That was quite a lot of soldering and yeah, you might have noticed that it's not perfect, but I think I can fix that. I might just have to switch some resistor values and then it looks better. It might just be that my signal generator is noisy and I might be able to just build one with an Arduino instead. In the future, I might want to make a controller board that has every ICs on there and maybe some um, variable resistors so I can fine tune it. Um, that's probably a good idea. So tell me what you think about the project. Have you ever made an LED oscilloscope or do you have some experience with the LM3914 chip so you can help out? Like maybe tell me in which direction I have to uh, tweak things. That would be really awesome. If you have any other ideas for projects, um, just tell us. Um, you can do it here in the comments or even better in the suggestion box. There should be a link in our description. That's all we have for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and if not, tell me in the comments as well. Thank you for watching and auf Wiedersehen.